First Thessalonians chapter number 5, we're going to start reading in verse number 1. It says, But of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child. And they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in the darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are the children of the light, and of the children of the day, and we are not in the night, nor of darkness. Therefore let us not sleep, as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that are be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us, who are of the day, be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and of love, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together, and edify one another, even as, ye also, even as also ye do. And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you, and are over you in the Lord, and admonish you, and to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake, and be at peace among yourselves. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak, and be patient toward all men. See that none render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good both among yourselves and to all men. Our gracious heavenly Father, Lord, we do thank you again, Lord, for this day. Lord, we're so thankful just how good you are to us, Lord, and we're so thankful, Lord, that you do give us everything that we need, Lord. We're thankful for the opportunity to be in your house. Lord, we're thankful to stand behind your pulpit and preach. Lord, we're just thankful for all these people that came out on this Wednesday evening, Lord, just to hear from you. Lord, I ask you just be with what you've laid upon my heart. Help me convey it here to your people, Lord, the way you gave it to me, that it can be a help, a strength, and encouragement to each and every one here tonight, Lord. If anybody here that's lost, Lord, uh, through my feeble efforts, Lord, do you help them see their need for salvation, Lord, and be uh, saved before it ever be everlasting too late. I ask you just help meet with us now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The first thing I want to look at, as we see in verse number one, is just simply it talks about the times of the season. Uh, we see in this in this letter he talks about, but of the times of the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. And can I say for those of us that uh, more than likely that are here on a Wednesday night, um, I would say that rings true. We don't need to know about the fact that we are living in the last days. Um, if we believe and know anything about the Bible, it is very easy for us to look out and look around and know we are living in the last days. We can look at the nonsense that goes on on a daily basis, and we know where we're at. Uh, that goes without saying. We know where we are at. And knowing where we are at, knowing the times of the season, knowing what's going on, we already know what we need to be doing. We know how we need to be getting the gospel out. We know how we need to be doing certain things. Why? Because of the travail that it talks about in verse number 3. It's going to be coming. For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. Uh, we know that when the Antichrist comes in and talks and tries to tell them about all that peace, we know the travail and everything that everybody will go through. We know the things that they are going to face when that time comes. Uh, we know that then we, we go through, and it talks about the next few uh, uh, verses, we know that it's going to come as the thief, it talks about in verse number 4. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. You are the children of the light, and the children of the day, or we are not of the night, nor of darkness. That should help us and be willing and help us to get excited. The fact that we know that if the Bible talks about, when it talks about the last days, we're not going to have to go through some of those things. We're not going to be here in that day of truth. We're not going to be here uh, during those uh, seven years of tribulation. We're not going to be here through all those times when things are going to get, when we think things can't get worse, how much much worse they're going to be then. We're not going to have to be there for any of that. We are not of this world. We are not going to have to worry about that as the thief in the night cometh. That should give us reason to shout. That should give us reason to be excited tonight. That no matter how much this world beats us up, no matter how much on the job we get frustrated, we get aggravated, no matter how much we watch on TV and the things that are going on and want to get us down, we know that there's things that are only going to get better for us. If you're here tonight and you're saved, things are only looking up. No matter what may happen in this world, things are still looking up. But we see all that, and we, we see those next few verses and talk about those things, but it gets down into verses number 10 and 11. 
And we see it talks about being together. Verse number 10, who died for us, whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. What a day that's going to be. What a day that's going to be, whether we, we get called out of here, but because it's our numbers up, or we get called out of here in the rapture, what a day that's going to be to live together with him. We should most definitely be looking forward to that, and that should give us hope each and every day that we wake up, that today could be the day. Today could be the day of looking up and knowing that we get to go on to heaven to spend eternity with him. But in verse number 11, it says, Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as also ye do. Ye do. How together are we, as a one body of Christ, as a Emmanuel Baptist Church, or as a family, or whatever it may be, today, sitting here tonight? How together are we amongst each other? It is easy for us to say, oh, we, we love coming to church, and as Brother Phil talked about, well, we look forward to this oasis we get in the middle of the week. We look forward to coming and spending time with fellow saints of God. But how truly together are we? That led me to looking at in verse number, in verse number 14, and there's only two places in the Bible, this certain word that's found here, that I'm going to look at in verse number 14 that we're going to take a look at tonight. It says, Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly. Comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak, be patient toward all men. Can I say that I believe that we do all that we can, I hope that we do all that we can to warn them that are unruly. Hopefully we do all that we can to go out and spread the gospel. Hope we do all we can to live a Christian life in front of those around us to warn them about the things that are coming. Hopefully we do everything that we can to comfort the feeble-minded. And we, we probably, boy, this is really hard sometimes, is to be patient toward all men. People can frustrate us, Brother Donald. We can get real aggravated to people really quick. And it's very hard to show patience to people. Our pastor talked about it on Sunday. He was talking to Miss Annette, coming to church and seeing those people out walking their dog, people out jogging, people out doing those things. They're just doing what comes natural. They're just doing what they know to do. They don't, you know, you even see people that maybe even supply, say they go to church. Maybe they're going to feel better about themselves and they go to a church that's not preaching the true gospel. It's tough sometimes to be patient with all of them. I've done made Miss Elizabeth mad. But look at, before it gets about that patient, it says, support the weak. How much support do we show? That's all I want to preach on tonight. Is that simple word, support. If you want to call it preaching, teaching, whatever it may be. But I want to talk a little bit about support tonight. Those young men that was up here on Sunday and you see them go and, and they would go and, and one of them would go pray and they would come around and just gather around one another showing their support one for another. You see him, uh, Brother Joseph, I love him when he gets up on Sunday mornings and just you see him over and just start slowly going to one or two or whatever it may be. Just give him a hug and let him know that he supports them. Can I say the first thing about support is support is not just words. Support is more than just words. Support is more than just trying to say, oh, hey, we support you, and then go on about our business. I'm about to fry. Sorry, Brother Ray, I know I told you that somebody said it was hot and you was going to try to make it cold. I'm not cold by any stretch. Support is more than just words. 2 Timothy chapter number 2 and verse number 16. But shame, profane, and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. Now, I understand completely what that's talking about, but how many times do we have those vain words that come out of us, uh, Brother Jim, when we just tell somebody, hey, I support you, but we don't ever show it, which we'll get to that in a minute. You think of one of the, the greatest things that has happened since 2020, and we have a, uh, an officer here in church, Brother Christian, but how, I, he hears so much time, so many times probably people say, we support the police, but where are you when people come against them? Where are you when people start, stand, when st people start talking out against them and those kind of things? Where are we then? Our pastor, he had told the story I remember before, and he told it again, I believe, a couple Sundays ago, or maybe last Wednesday, talking about that preacher that wanted to get up in his town and have the parade, which, by the way, I have. Uh, he, he talked about trying to get that parade. Uh, I've reached out, and it seems to be the very difficult to try to get a response back out of the city of Cincinnati. So if anybody knows anybody that works for the city of Cincinnati, let me know, and put me in contact with the right people, because I keep sending emails and getting nothing back. I'm sending emails to the point that I'm getting emails back in my iCloud account saying, you need to follow up with this, because they've never answered back. But, but, but we're going to keep trying. We're going to keep trying until we get to the right people answer us. But anyway, he talked about that preacher wanting to have that parade through town and all the preachers told him hey we're for you we're behind you we'll be there 
only to show up on the day of and nobody there. Support is more than just words. It's not about just saying that, hey, we support you. It's not about just saying, you know, our teens and, and whatever may be, just saying, hey, we support you, we're here for you, but then never do nothing about it. Support takes more than just words. Not only, support takes effort. Look with me over in Luke chapter number 10. Gospel of Luke chapter number 10, a very familiar story that uh, I would say most, if not everybody, is going to know. Luke chapter number 10. Verse number 33, and it says, But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion on him, and went to him, and bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine, and set him on his own beast, and brought him to an inn, and took care of him. And on the morrow, when he departed, he took out two pence, and gave them to the host, and said unto him, Take care of him, and whatsoever thou spendest more, when I come again, I will repay thee. Support takes effort. As I talked about, we, we can say we lend our support to anybody that we want. Vain words, vain babblings. Support takes effort. If we are to support one another, that's going to take some effort. That's going to take a little bit of legwork, so to speak. We're going to have to do a little bit more than just say, Hey, I'm here for you, Brother Joseph. I'm going to do everything I can to support you. And then never do anything to show that. It takes effort. Uh, we, we know this. We could read the rest of this story and everything about how the Good Samaritan and all those and everything, that those that passed by him and stepped over him. But there's one, Brother Donald, that made the effort. There's one that made the effort to show what he wanted to do. How much effort do we put in to show support for those around us? How much effort do we put in to show support for those that are here? Yeah, it, we, can, we can talk about our kids and our kids being thankful, but how much effort do you put in to show support for our Sunday school teachers that we have? How much effort do you put in to tell them how much you appreciate them teaching? You might not even be your kid. might not even be your grandkid. It just might be the fact that you just, how much do you see our young people are a part of a product because of our Sunday school teachers and those kinds of things? And what about those that work with our youth? What about those that, how much support did you show Brother Josh and Miss Brittany and, and those that went and took the youth and for, you know, took the young, all of them here a month or so ago and then took all the youth here a couple weeks ago? How much effort do you go through in telling them how much you appreciate and how much you support them in everything that they do? See, support takes effort. Support takes us doing something a little extra. You know, we, we talk about, hey, you know, we, we watch the video, Brother Doug and Miss Annette put together, and they come back from Grenada, and it's like, hey, we want to do what we can to help, want to do what we can to support those kids and support the work there. Are you going to be willing to give Brother Donald that $15.50? Look, I'm not trying to get on anybody. You do whatever you want to do, but I'm guessing that's probably, what, two Starbucks this month? You know, cut back two Starbucks. Cut back eating out one time. Well, you know, we went to, uh, we, we went to, we always, in, in our household, um, so I guess now we'll just eat an extra fourth time without you, and we'll celebrate your birthday without you. But we, whenever it gets around your birthday, you pick where we want to eat on brother Sun, on a Sunday, Brother Charlie. So I picked Red Robin because I get a free burger. And even Red Robin's gone is, is higher now. You can't get even a simple burger for less than $13 or something. Now everything's going up. Maybe just eat out once less. Maybe eat out twice left and give him $31 instead of just $15.50. Support takes effort sometimes. It might be we're going to have to go without something in order to do something to further the gospel, to further the work of the Lord. Not only does support take effort, support also shows. Look at the end of verse number 35. It would have been one thing if this man had took that man in and bound him up and did all he could and then just took him out and just left him. No, he showed his support on this man by taking the fact that he went and paid for the room, and he took and he says, and he gave, on the morrow when he departed, he took out two pence, gave them to the host, and said unto him, Take care of him, and whatsoever thou spendest more, I will, when I come again, I will repay thee. It showed others around them how much he was willing to support this man and see him get help. How much does our support show? We would give not, we won't give a second thought to wearing a t-shirt that has, uh, 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 maybe a singer on it or a sports team on it or whatever it may be. We'll put stickers on our car or we'll do whatever we will to show support for anything that's out there in the world. But what about showing support for the people around us and the saints of God? Amen. How much do we put forth the effort to show them how much we support them? How much do we show up for them when they need it most? See, we get to we, we get into the support, and, and I, like I said, I don't know. Uh, maybe part of this came the fact that I think it was um, 
uh, I believe it was Saturday, I think. I think it was Saturday. Now I'm completely losing track of the days. But now I'm on a, I'm on a roll tonight. I've made every baby in the, in the house here mad tonight and preaching. But I think it was Saturday. We was going around and we was doing some shopping. And, and Miss Tina said, I got this gift card. Let me run in here to Target. And I want to go in here real quick and see if they have something. And she ran in there and she came back out. And she was talking about how she felt it was just weird. We hadn't been in Target in a long time. Brother Ray said that all the faces were gender neutral. And she goes, it was just weird going in there. And, and we look at so many things that we have no problem lending our support to. Now I'm not telling you stop. You go shop wherever you want to. You know, some of those things, it's hard. We can't just not shop anywhere. we got to have groceries, got to have food. But we will show our support to a lot of things. But what about the people of God? Yeah. We show our support. You know, me and uh, uh, Bella last Friday night went to the Reds game. It's the first Red, Reds game we've probably been in two, five or six years. But we'll show up and we'll show our support to those kinds of things. We'll give them our money. We'll show up and we'll, we'll, we'll buy their hot dogs and we'll buy the drink and we'll buy the, the team gear and the hat and spend all that kind of crazy money on stuff. But what about the people here? How much do we show support to those around us? How together truly are we? You know, we, we, we say, oh, hey, I'm, I'm, it, it, it's funny. I'm trying, to be, I'm trying to be nice. It's funny how we, we, we say that we want to show our support to others and we want to do that, but then the first chance we'll get, we'll, we'll be talking about somebody behind their back, Brother Donald. Right. We'll be running somebody down. We'll be questioning certain things that they do or this or that. How are we really showing support yeah. that way? How are we truly together that way? How are we truly being that one church completely sold out to God if we're not showing support one for another? Support shows. Not only uh, does support, not just words, not only does it take eff effort, but a support shows. Can I say this fourthly? Support is earned. Or is it? Is it earned? We can say respect is earned. That's a little different. We can say respect is something that somebody has to earn. You have to earn my respect. Should support be something that is earned? And Jeremiah, or first in Ephesians chapter number 4, in verses 11 and 12, and it says, And he gave some apostles, and some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors, and teachers, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. So if he gives us these things, and you think about our pastors, and you think about our teachers, he gives us those things here in the church for us to edify us, to help strengthen us, to help, to, to help see us grow as the body of Christ. They deserve our support. Can I say, until, it gets to this, until they get to Jeremiah chapter 23 and verses 1 and 2, Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, saith the Lord. Therefore thus saith the Lord God of Israel, against the pastors that feed my people, ye have scattered my flock and driven them away and have not visited them. Behold, I will visit upon you the evil of your doings, saith the Lord. Now if they get to that point that they are, they are that pastor, they are that teacher that destroys and scatters the flock, that's different. We don't want to support that nonsense. But yet we won't lend our pastors, we won't lend our teachers and things like that our support, but we will lend our support to some kind of craziness on TV and sit and watch a TV preacher or a TV uh, teacher or whatever it may be and, and buy their books and buy their things that they are not promoting the gospel. They are not promoting the work of Christ. They are not promoting the true things of God. But we will support them and their doings without supporting our even our local our local church our local pastor our local teachers see that they should not have when god places the man of god here when he placed placed our pastor here 23 years ago whatever it may be he deserved our support now i wasn't here at the time but brother clint and the five or six others he deserved their support until he shows us otherwise he's not shown us otherwise therefore he deserves our support it isn't something he has to come in and earn every Sunday. He don't have to come in and try to do something in Sunday school to earn our support for the worship hour. Support is not necessarily earned. We should just be willing to give our support if we're going to be willing to support those things and willing to support the things here at the church. I got some ice that time. Let me say this. Lastly, boy, that got through this way faster than I planned on, Brother Randy. You got anything extra you want to add in here? Any, anything at all? Nothing. Can I say this is what happens? We get to, this is just, this is me speaking. This is just for me. You get to where you're going through life. 
and you just get your normal day-to-day -day stuff and you, and you wake up every morning and you go to work, this, this, this could even go back here. This could even go back to the video I was talking about earlier. You boys are so young and boy, you think everything is just wonderful and great right now. Let me give you a word of advice. Adulting isn't as much fun as you think. Stay young. Where, where, is, where is Elena? We had that conversation with Elena a few weeks ago. She was back there talking, and I believe, is Elena 10? 8. So she was talking about it. She was 8, and I think she was talking to, I think it was me and Miss Pam, said she couldn't wait till she got to be 9. And when she got to be 9, she couldn't wait till she got to be 10. And when she got 10, she couldn't wait till she got to be 11. I said, well, let me tell you right now, you better stop right here where you're at, because before you know it, you're going to be 18, and then you're going to have to pay your car insurance, you're going to have to pay for your groceries, you're going to have to pay the light bill, you're going to have to pay all these things. I said, adulting it is as much fun as you think. You better stay 8 for as long as you can. But can I say, when you get to be an adult, you get to where you're just, you just go through life every day, Brother Clint. It's just same thing, feels like same thing over and over and over. You get up every morning, you go to work, you go work for however long you're at work, you get done, you come home, you got things to do around the house, you cook supper, you do whatever, maybe you sit down, you might watch TV, you might do some reading, whatever you may do, you go to bed and you get up and do the same thing tomorrow. And before you know it, it just seems just like that ritual. It's just the same thing over and over and over and over again. And then before you know it, those two little babies that I've done made mad, they had to take out of here crying. Before you know it, they're growing up like that, and they're getting married in two days. Right. And what we, don't fail, what we fail to realize is sometimes the thing that's going on around us. And we fail to realize a lot of times is that that support and how much we supported, whether it be our pastor, whether it be the teachers, whether it be the people at the church, whether it be even just our friends and those things around us, we forgot about him, Brother Donald. We all of a sudden haven't paid him attention. All of a sudden, I'm sitting there, and I used to have some some one friends I used to text at least three or four times a week, five times a week, just ask how they was doing, just seeing how they are, checking in on them. All of a sudden, I haven't texted them in two weeks. The only time I've seen them, Brother Ray's at church. Having sex and ask how they are. Having sex, ask how their day is going. I come into church, even when we get into church, and I come in just expecting the same thing. And, and uh, I come in, I shake a few hands, might say hi to a few people, ask how the week's been, sit down, listen to a couple songs, listen to the preacher preach, and get up and walk back out and go home. And I just go through that same, we get our, find ourselves, I'm afraid, too many times in that same ritual over and over and over and over again. And you know what that happens? You know what that causes? That causes our support to wane. That causes our support to wane at times. We all of a sudden, we don't show the same support for the things going on that we once did. In 2 Thessalonians, it talks a little bit about that in chapter 3, verse 13. But ye, brethren, be not weary in well-doing. Our support begins to wane. I know that's talking about not do, you know, doing working and it's getting weary in well-doing, but our support begins to wane. We don't let those people around us know how much we truly care for them. We don't let them know how much we support them the way that we once did. We don't let them know that we're here for them when they need be. I had this conversation with the guy at work. I guess it was one day last week. He was really, really struggling, Brother Ed, at work. He was going through a lot of stuff at work. And I told him, I said, I said, unfortunately, I said, you're going to get to that point. I said, look, I said, I, I will be 47 years old here in a couple weeks. I said, and this, this isn't easy. I said, I, I still struggle with this. I said, but you're going to realize at one point in time, there's just that handful of people that are for you. I said, you can't let all the rest of them steal your joy. I said, it's hard. It's tough sometimes. But can I say all of us have those days? All of us have those weeks. All of us might have those months that we just feel like the whole world has gone against us. And sometimes you might have that friend of yours that might be in that situation. They need to know that you support them. They need to know that you're there for them. They need to know that, that, that you got their back, so to speak. They need to know that, that you can, you can count, they can count on you if they need somebody to call, if they need somebody to text, if they need some of those things. Look, I tell them in jail all the time. I said, look, we want to see you get saved. I said, that is what we want. We want to see you spend eternity in heaven. I said, but the next thing you need to do is we want to see you get in a good Bible-believing, Bible-preaching church. I tell him, Brother Donald, it doesn't have to be Emmanuel Baptist Church. You might not be from around here. I said, we, we, we give you the bulletins, call our pastor. He knows churches and stuff all across the country. I said, because you need in that church that when you come to that point that you're faced with, you think you need that hit. You think you need to go out and get drunk again. You think you need to go do this, that. You need that good people that you can call on and say, hey, I need help right now because I'm struggling. I'm about to fall off the wagon, so to speak. We have the same problems that they do. We might, not be, we might not turn to drugs. We might not turn to alcohol. We might just get depressed. We might just get down. We, we have no idea what people are going through. They just need to know there's somebody out there that cares. 
Look, we started off talking about the times of the season. This world will beat you up, chew you up, and spit you out just like that. They don't care. And especially the day and age we're living in now when the attack on Christianity, with the attack on God's people, with the attack on that they want nothing to do with us. Remember, we were called, what was it, you know, seven years ago now, we were called the deplorables. Four years, three years ago now, we were called that we were unnecessary. You know, we didn't need to have church. So it's a world out there that's completely against us. So they need to know, fellow saints of God need to know that we have our support. So I'm going to ask you these two questions tonight before I'm finished. What are you supporting? What are you supporting? I talked a little bit ago about, you know, us, about Miss Tina, about us going to Target. And, and I, like I said, I understand we can't disagree with everything. We can't disagree with all the places. We got to be able to grocery shop, got to be able to do certain things. I got to, my, my oil might come from Saudi Arabia, Brother Donald, but I still need gas, get back and forth to work. It, it is what it is, you know? But what are we supporting here? He talked about the homeless ministry coming up and wanting to start that after work camp. How much do we support that? You, and I'm not telling you you have to give money. I'm not telling you you have to be a part of it. But how much have you even went to our pastor or went to whoever may be over top of something and just say, hey, I want you to know we support you. We're praying for you. You let me know if there's anything, any kind of special prayer that you need. What are you supporting? Do you help support the jail ministry? Do you help support the kids? Do you help support Sunday school? Do you help support these things that are going on at Emmanuel Baptist Church? And not only what are you supporting, but then just the last question is, is who do you support? Do you support our pastor? Look, I haven't talked to him. This he didn't give me. He has no idea when I'm preaching. You know, brother Ed, he's asked me ever since Monday when I'm preaching. I said, when God lets me know, I tell you. When I pull in tonight, he says, God let you know yet? He's like, nope, not yet. Because in my mind, I might have told him out there, and God might have changed my mind from there to here. So it could have been different. Then I'd have been a liar. Can I say, who are you supporting? Who do you tell you support? Not only just our pastor, not only our Sunday school teachers. But what about each other? Amen. We've seen. And look, I'm not, I'm not, I don't want you to get something on your heart just because I'm talking about it. We've seen multiple, multiple young men all around this altar on Sunday morning and Sunday night praying. And then you would have one after another go to them and just get down and pray with them and support them. When was the last time we seen any adult go to the altar and pray and anybody come up and just pray with them just say, hey, I just want you to know I love you, I care for you, and I'm just going to pray with you. Don't do it if God don't lay it on your heart. Don't do it just because you think that, you, just because Brother Josh said so. But when was the last time it did? See, I think so, so many times we get in our mind, it's, not, it's none of my business, Clint, what somebody's going through. Brother Christian comes up here tonight and starts praying, it's none of my business what he's going through. If God lays it on my heart just to go pray with him, I need to go pray with him. When was the last time we, we, we had these services on occasion and, and if God don't change my mind between now and here in the last few minutes, we might do it the same thing tonight. When was the last time you had that time at the end of the service, you just went around just... Just hug somebody's neck and say, I just want you to know I'm here for you. Just want you to know I'm praying for you. Just want you to know you got my support and I appreciate everything you do. Amen. Who do we show our support to? We are so quick to support so many things that go on out in this world. We are so quick that, you know, we, we see, and, and look, I, there's not, I'm not saying there's anything bad about these things. There's not by no stretch of the imagination. But uh, I'll tell you a story I heard today. There's, I guess, some lady now, I haven't seen the video, don't know what was going on, have no idea. There's some lady now, I guess, that's from somewhere in the south, and she's went over to, I don't know, if the United Emirates or United Arab Nation or something like that, and I guess evidently she's gotten detained. And evidently she's gotten detained, and, and supposedly, I guess, they've, they've started a GoFundMe page to try to get her out. And the thing about it is, is you're going to have a lot of people, Brother, Brother Donald, that are probably going to throw money that way to want to see her get help. I was listening to a podcast today, and somebody was on that podcast, and they was talking a little bit about uh, uh, things that are going on. And this, the other lady that was on this podcast, she said, you know, she goes, here's the thing. She goes, I've been in that country. She goes, I've been in that country before and started my own business and very successful there. She goes, what you have to realize, when you go to these other places, they have rules. She goes, these other countries, she goes, I am always aware of the laws that are in these countries before I go. You can't raise your voice over there, Brother Ray. You can't raise your voice. She goes, and then her problem was, she goes, not only can you not raise your voice, you can't use foul language. And see, and evidently, this lady was in a bunch of trouble, and I guess she wrecked a, a rental car or something, and she was wanting to get her stuff from the car or whatever and got in a big argument with some guy. And, and, and no doubt probably raised her voice, probably said a few choice words, and then the lady said, and then the third thing you can't do is you're not allowed to leave that country if you have any debt. She goes, if you owe any money for anything, you can't leave that country. 
And now she wants to leave. And so they've evidently set it up a GoFundMe page and everything because we want to help this lady out that's been so improperly detained. No, she hasn't, Brother Charlie. She broke the laws in that country. Be aware of what's going on. But too many people, too many times, will be so quick to throw our support at that kind of stuff. We'll be so quick that we say, and look, I understand it is terrible sometimes, and I think I've seen this this morning there's flooding and stuff going on somewhere, even in our own state right now. It's terrible to see when those people lose those things. And we'll want to send money. We'll want to send whatever it may be. What about one another? When was the last time we just showed our support one for another? When was the last time you just went to somebody else in the church and just let them know, say, hey, I'm here for you, I love you, and if you ever need anything, you reach out and let me know. We're so quick to support everything else. What about one another? That verse said, support the weak. Can I say all of us have our weak moments? All of us have our moments that we wake up. Man, you can wake up on a day and you can, I, I, I look forward. I'm getting up early in the morning and I'm looking forward. The Open Championship starts. I'm, I'm going to text you, Brother Thad, and wake you up so you can watch golf with me in the morning. I'm going to get up a little bit early and flip it on TV and you can so look forward to having a good day. And you can get out of bed and stub your toe, or you wake up on the wrong side of the bed, or you get up and you, uh, you know, pour water on your cereal instead of milk, or whatever it may be, and all of a sudden the day just goes downhill from there. And then the devil gets in your mind, Miss Marcy, and then tells you how worthless you are, and then just beats you up all day. And then you just get down and get depressed, and before you know it, you don't even care about getting up watching golf on Friday, because as far as you're concerned, the world could end. You care less about what's going on. And if you're not careful, that then just turns into day after day after day. And then you come into church and sit down and nobody shook your hand and Miss Mary made fun of you and, and everybody looked at you cross-eyed or whatever. Brother Doug's not here to make fun of you. Somebody had to, right? And everybody looks at you and the devil gets playing in your mind and before you know it, that, that bad day has turned into a bad month. Sometimes people just need to know that you're here for them. Sometimes people just know that you care for them. Sometimes people just need to know that you love them and that you support them and you're, and, and you're going to be there for them. So, Brother Daniel, I'm going to ask you to come to the piano. And I, I've prayed about this ever since God laid this on my heart about what we was going to do. So that's what we're going to do tonight. I'm not going to have a big, huge invitation. I ask all of you to stand. And maybe tonight you've got somebody God's laid on your heart. Maybe you have that friend that you talked about that you used to text all the time, that now all of a sudden you've not reached out to them in a couple weeks. Maybe you have somebody you just think that God's laid on your heart. You know they've been going through it. They've been faced with some things lately, and you just want to let them know, hey, I'm here for you, and I support you. I just want to let you know that I've been praying for you, that I see you going through whatever it may be, and I just want you to know of how much I appreciate all that you do. While he picks out a song to play, let's pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we do thank you again for this day. Lord, I'm thankful, Lord, as I know that we have a good and wonderful church, Lord. I believe with all my heart we have the best church in the area, Lord, but I also know sometimes we can just get to going through the motions, Lord, and sometimes people can just get down. Sometimes, Lord, people can just be... Did you know that you could receive a daily devotion every morning in your inbox? Head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on Daily Devotions to sign up today. And as always, thanks for listening.